This is the old access lane to Morton Castle. This is not far from Durastir in Dumfries and Galloway. Below is the Morton Loch. Actually, a relatively recent creation in terms of uh, sometime in the 18th century. This previously, this was marshland. The castle has in common with Kylaverock that it's uh, roughly triangular shaped or D-shaped. Been a castle here since at least the 11th century, if not before. Certainly, the Lord of Nithsdale or Strathnith, as it was in those days. Lord Dunigal, a person of Irish Scottish descent, he held a castle or a fort here. His grandson, Edgar, interestingly a, a Saxon name, Edgar gave lands at uh, near Thornhill, a place called Dalgarnock, he gave those lands for the building of a church, which lasted right up until the 17th century. The castle was still occupied up to about 1715. It's likely it had been uh, partly rebuilt as a hunting lodge. The entrance was here, was by a drawbridge. The surviving ruins here may date from the 15th century. It is known that in around the, about the 14th century, King David II was returned to Scotland after being held captive in England for many years. And part of the agreement was that 13 castles in Nithsdale would be destroyed, and this was one of them. If you look at a, a map of the castles that were in the borders of Scotland, I'd say it was rather a small number. This is the dam that holds the waters back. It's not clear whether it was built purely for cosmetic appearances or whether this dam supplied water to mills and so on further down. Morton Castle stands in an easily defended position with three sides surrounded by water, it was then marsh, plus a protective ditch or foss now partly filled in. One of the earls of Morton, who had many other properties, was regent of Scotland to James VI. However, once James VI became king, he had the Earl executed. The Earl had become implicated in the murder of Lord Darnley, Lord Darnley being James VI's father, because his mother being Mary Queen of Scots. All the lands of the Mortons were confiscated for a while. The lands passed through to the Queensbury's and Buclus, the Douglases, so now this is owned by the Duke of Buclu in Queensbury. The castle has been extensively robbed for building farms and so on, dikes nearby, but still a fair amount remains. Also the, uh, the site is recalled in place names and such this was uh, part of a barony, or the seat of a barony, and we have the place names, the Judgment Thorn and the Gallows Flat. Those uh, recall the days when the barons had the right of pit and gallows. That is, they were able to hold barony courts and uh, carry out sentences of death or otherwise. This is the great hall of the castle. Here's the main fireplace. This is where all the major events were taken place, the meals and so on. This hole here, and this structure sticking out, these are unusual survivals, these are slop drains. So waste could be just simply tipped to those and washed outside the castle. where the first floor would have been, corbels, some corbels surviving. 